This is going to be the first of many videos in our series Black Mamba Born to Hunt. So join us as we watch this little baby mink grow from a helpless little kit to one of nature's most intense predators. Fur farmers have been breeding mink for fur production purposes for over a hundred years. During that time, ranch mink have been selected for traits such as thick, luxurious fur, large size, and various different colors. In the wild, mink are voracious little hunters, able to hunt aggressive prey like muskrats and squirrels, as well as dive underwater to catch aquatic prey like crawdads and fish. In the wild, the mink who excel at hunting and fishing survive. On the farm, only mink with nice fur and large size are selected for breeding. Even though ranch mink haven't hunted or fished for over a hundred generations, they still somehow retain their natural abilities to hunt for prey. I have two mink who are exceptionally good hunters. Brock is a powerfully built big buck who isn't afraid of anything. The word Brock actually means badger in Old English, and he was named that because of his powerful build and fearless nature. Brock was purchased from a fur farm as an adult, but unlike most mink who are highly aggressive and less trained otherwise, Brock was naturally friendly towards humans without any training. Though he is exceptionally social with people, Brock is also a brazen and driven hunter who fearlessly hunts even the most aggressive of muskrats. Like Brock, Maher Shal Al Hashbaz, or Maher for short, was also acquired from a fur farm as an adult. Her name is Hebrew, and it means destruction comes quickly. She was given such a fearsome name because, like Brock, Maher is a highly aggressive and absolutely fearless muskrat hunter. Having a buck and doe mink who were both such exceptionally good hunters, it only made sense to breed them together in an attempt to create the ultimate hunting mink. When Maher had her litter, I was elated. This was my first time having a litter of my very own. So the day has come. I've been going nuts this morning. Um, I got up. First thing I did was I came out and I lifted the, the board here. And uh, there's some little squeaking. And we have babies. So I'm so excited to show you guys. Oh, I'm just going nuts. I haven't looked at them yet. I actually went back inside, got the camera, got Maggie. So. I'm, I've got the jitters because I haven't even looked at him yet other than a quick peek. So, introducing our new baby mink. Now, I would have the privilege of watching baby mink grow and develop from day one. And better yet, this letter came from some of the best hunting mink I have ever seen. I was beyond excited to see how these future hunting mink would turn out. I spent countless of hours wow. holding each baby, baby mink, mink and working to create an early bond with these soon-to-be voracious little hunters. You got a nice full tummy now. I also carefully tested and evaluate each mink kit, trying to decide which of the nine mink I would pick as my future hunting companion. I'm going to let them use their nose to find the muskrat and get the food. So that way they start learning to use their nose a little bit, just like they would in nature. I watched which kits excelled at following a simple scent trail to find their meal of muskrat meat. I also watched their interactions with each other to see who was more confident and feisty. Early on, I noticed that the kit with the green collar was almost always the first to find the muskrat at mealtime, and also was far more affectionate than the rest of her siblings. She seemed to have a much stronger bond with me than any of the other kits. The emotional part of me naturally gravitated towards this extra friendly little kit with a good nose. But, I wanted the kit I picked out to be both an exceptional hunter, as well as a good friend. So I was determined not to pick favorites until I could see more hunting qualities as the kits matured. As I got to know her better with time, I began to call this affectionate little kit with the green collar, Black Mamba. Black Mambas are highly venomous, highly aggressive snakes from Africa. They are an arboreal snake who often climbs trees and are actually the fastest snake in the world. They get their name from the dark black color on the inside of their mouths. The mink with the green collar also had a black mouth. In fact, it was one of the ways that I told her apart from her siblings back before she was old enough to wear a collar. 
Also like the Black Mamba, Greencaller was an exceptionally aggressive little mink, and often got into some pretty intense little battles with her siblings. Like Black Mambas, Greencaller also had arboreal tendencies. She's a little climber, and I don't know why I like that. Why, why is it to benefit if they climb? We don't really hunt arboreal prey <laughs> very much, if at all, but for some reason I like the little climbers. And she's a climber for couple about a week now ever since she's old enough too she'd climb up to my shoulder and just hang out up here instead of sitting on my lap with the rest of the babies. Green Collar had a more athletic look about her when compared to her other siblings and she gave me the impression that she would be the fastest runner out of the litter. After seeing all of these appealing qualities in one mink it became very clear which kit I was going to keep as my future hunting partner. Honestly, the choice was so clear I couldn't even think of a next runner-up. So the final decision was made, and Black Mamba was selected to become the newest member of our family. Don't miss the next episode of Black Mamba Born to Hunt. We're going to be taking our little mink for a swim at a lake near our house. 